So please, please say over the question. So my question to you, Rabbi, was I wanted to know the Kabbalistic uh, ideas behind the possibilities of the, there being other worlds and other universes and how that fits in with our world that we're living in today. Right. Okay, so generally the, the approach of the Torah is that we have this world and there's no like aliens there's no like other like anything else besides of this world meaning physical there is like spiritual worlds right. yeah so ganad and ganom all kinds of levels within ganad and within ganom right seven heavens seven like like uh, levels of ganom and that's that's like generally the the approach um and that's, in a way, also what I heard from rabbis that I was in touch with. But there is uh, there is an article in the Zohar, Zohar Ve'ikra, that I just uh, opened, that is speaking about different worlds, different like creatures, creations, mm -hmm. in different worlds that can you can interpret that article of Zohar with the with that approach that I was mentioning, that it's not talking about a physical existence, it's talking about all kinds of spiritual uh, worlds that are exist, mm. and spiritual creatures, cre creations that are there, identities. Um, but if you take the, the Zohar more literally, so it can very easily be explained as talking about like aliens, and all kinds of other like possibilities right. okay so for me generally in those those things i prefer not to take a stand in one side or the other because really there's no need and there's no contradiction it can be both and it can be something totally different mm. but anyhow to get to get that uh, piece of of uh, inspiration from the zohar I think it's a positive thing. So let's look at it a little bit. I'm not going to read like all the all the words of the Zohar because then it will take too much time. But <coughs> um, I will just say that it is found in uh, Vaikra page 9b, Teta Mut Bet. And the article starts, Baruch Hashem Itzion. Okay? Bless Hashem from Zion. So now. we are here in, in Zion, and yes, it's just like a good good place to read this article. Right. Right. Yerushalayim, Aruka. Okay. So so the the Zohar is asking like, what do you mean like Baruch Hashem it's Zion? Only from Zion? The bracha is only in Zion. <laughs> the whole world is like full of the of the blessings of Hashem. Right. Right. It says it says the the concept that the Zohar is bringing minahara min, minahara mika ilaayu baruch. It's like it's the, the the blessing of Hashem is coming from the highest of the highest, mm. the infinity, like the like the deepest of the deepest. Like why you say from Tion? Tion is something of this world, no? <coughs> and then the Zohar is coming to explain. Okay, obviously it's all about like code words of so so it's talking about the sun and the moon, but we know that the sun and the moon is really Zair and Pin and, and Nukba, like the masculine and feminine aspects, that there's unity and then the, there's like the 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 light, like the like a newborn that is that is uh, coming from that unity is the light, is the blessing, is the abundance that is coming down. Um and then from from that entering of that article, so it gets to start to speak about the concept of the seven heavens. Okay. So the Zohar says that the within the seven heavens, each one of the layers have stars, planets, um, and also servants that are serving in each one of those domains in each one of those heavens these are angels so simply that will be angels yeah um, <coughs> and there is levels upon levels right each one of the of the heavens have many levels the concept of Merkava in the Aramaic is called Retichin mm -hmm. so the Retichin the, which is the Merkava is like something that is built to hold 
higher level of abundance within it. Yeah. <coughs> okay, so there is a there is angels that have uh, six wings, four wings. Okay, oh, okay. It's not really a subject matter, but I will use that as an opportunity to say that it's very easy to fall into our default kind of of perspective of like what does it mean like wings, like we see by the birds, right? right? So that's what you see, like in the you know all kinds of uh, of Middle Ages uh, art that they were like painting uh, angels, oh. you know, in like the in the whatever churches, whatever. So they do it like with with wings, like birds. Actual wings. Yeah, but but uh, like for me, it's quite obvious that whenever we speak about something in like in the scripts and uh, specifically in the Zohar, um, usually it will not be the literal tr like interpretation of that. It's kind of code words. So, so, so wings is something that lifts you higher, right? So it's not, it's not, it's not about like physical wings. The right. spiritual is not physical. So to imagine physical bird-like wings is, is a mistake, right? Mm. When someone is learning Kabbalah in this way that whatever is like the parable is stuck into the parable, is not able to let go of the physical appearance of the parable and to elevate his consciousness to something more spiritual, more abstract. So these kind of people usually shouldn't learn so much Kabbalah because it makes them like confused and disturb their, their way of, of thinking. So, <coughs> so what are wings? Again, like that's a, something that is, it has the strength, someone that have the strength of elevation, so you have wings, mm. right? right? Conceptual wings. Someone that, that is like very earthly, is not, is not, is not, be, is not experiencing elevation, is not experiencing spiritual elevation, he's stuck in his place, so he doesn't have wings. Mm. Okay? So when we talk about the <coughs> physical appearance of an angel, what would we be talking about if it's not wings? What would they look like? There's no physical appearance. It's not, they are not physical. They are spiritual. Right, but they're described in a physical way to help us what relate to them? Well, the language that we have is describing physical. Right. Right? If I will tell you like words that you don't understand, and I will tell you that's the definition of an angel, it won't help you. It won't give you anything, right? Sure. So, so I'm, us I'm using the language that you understand which is language that is describing the physical world. Right. And I'm trying to s speak about it in a way that it will give you some, some kind of a clue of what I'm talking about, but mm. it depends. Are you able to, to connect to those abstract concepts in your mind? Right. <coughs> Anyhow, so obviously we need to understand what's the difference between angel of six wings and angel of four wings. One could fly higher. Uh, so, so about the angel of the of the six wings. Um, so it says that's in uh, Yeshaya, right? Yeshaya says six uh, nafayim leechad, six nafal leechad. B'shnayim yichasef panav, b'shnayim yichasef glav, b'shnayim yofef. So two wings is covering his face, two wings is covering his legs, and two wings is flying with. Hmm. Okay, that's 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 the description that we have about the six wings. Um, so the Rashash explains what does it mean like the two wings that is like covering his face mm. is, is the, the fear of not being elevated above his level mm. and the two wings that are covering his legs is the fear of not going down from its, from its own level right. and two level, the two wings that are flying is to, is to, to get to his level wherever he's supposed to stand. That's that's like the obviously we can discuss only that for a long time. That's all of the meditation of the Anna Bekoach is based on that, by the way. Mm. But Bezrat Hashem will go into that uh, meditation and those concepts in another time. Anyhow, um, so that I'm just using that as as an opportunity to explain that we have all kinds of of physical descriptions, but obviously it's not about that. Yeah, and again, like here, the Zohar is saying that those heavens are like the shells of the onion. Yeah? Layers. 
so so like someone that will imagine a big onion you know floating in the universe so, like come on <laughs> like, like, what are you saying <laughs> right obviously it's it's ridiculous to to think that uh, we're just trying to describe like physical existence we're trying to, to explain like a spiritual concept yeah. so what does it mean layers like an onion so you have within the onion you have something that is more external and you have something that is deeper that is more internal sure. right so those those layers of the onion is the layers of existence right that more external so external it means closer to the physical right more internal as much as you're coming closer and closer to the inner light the infinite light of Hashem that is within everything right, right? <coughs> anyhow um, besides of the seven heavens also we have seven lands seven lands seven lands yeah Sheva Aratzot so the simple the, it's it's not it's not a uh, hundred percent solid what I'm saying but the simple understanding of that is that we have it's it's like we are in the middle of the existence and above us we have like seven layers of heavens and below us we have seven layers of earth okay and between each one of the layers of earth there is like a creation there is creatures there is identities hmm. yeah <coughs> so the seven lands refers <coughs> to our physical world that we're living in. <coughs> yeah. Um, no, we are living on the top layer of the of the earth. Right. Right. It's referring to the the earth right. itself. Right. Okay. So. Okay. So now 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 that that part that is describing the seven layers of earth. So within that, you have kinds of. All kinds of uh, creatures that are there in those lands, yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so then it is all said that between one layer of earth to another, there is a heaven. Yeah. So according to that description, so it's not that we we are in the middle and we have seven layers of of heaven in, on top and seven layers of of earth on the bottom it's like seven worlds that each one of them have its own earth and its own heaven so it's like seven balls seven planets whatever you want to call it um, okay there is many many ways how to how to interpret that that uh, that article of Zohar obviously Okay, I'm not trying to, to cover everything and I'm not trying to give like a final sack of what is the what is the truth existence of it. Mm. But I can just say as a note that for us with our limited physical thought, it's either or. You have to decide. You're talking about this description, this structure, or that. If it's that, it's not this. If it's this, it's not that. Right. Either or. Right. Right? And when we're talking about spiritual abstract concepts, so it doesn't have to be either or. It can be both in the same time. Sure. And, ah, but it's a contradiction. How can you say that? Okay, so it looks like a contradiction, but it can be, sometimes it happens, quite a lot in the learning of Kabbalah, that we're talking about different structures that are contradicting one another, and we have to understand what is the deeper meaning of each one of those of those descriptions and what is the spiritual concept that we are getting out of it mm. and to keep the concept and to leave the the physical description of it right right so i'm not limiting myself that it has to be this way i got the idea of what does it mean that we are in the middle of the existence and we have seven layers above us and seven lower layers below us